Now let's look at some application problems that involve systems of equations. One of the most common type are what we call motion problems. And in order to talk about or solve motion problems, we have to know one of our basic formulas. So the motion formula states that distance equals the rate or the speed multiplied by the time. So we're going to use that in one of our examples. However, this first example does not is not a motion problem, so we won't use that. But um, in this problem, Alpine trail mix is 40% nuts and Meadows trail mix is 25% nuts. How much of Alpine and how much of Meadows should be mixed to form a 10-pound batch of trail mix that is 32% nuts? So there's two different types of numbers happening in this problem. We have percents and we have pounds. Now most of our numbers are dealing with percents, but um, we do have the 10 pound batch of trail mix. So we're going to write two equations, one that represents pounds and one that represents um, all of the percents. So our two variables in this situation are the alpine trail mix, so I'm just going to use an A for that, and the meadows trail mix, so I'm going to use an M. So I'm going to use A and M in my system. The easiest one to do first is actually our pounds equation. Because I simply have two kinds of mix. I have the alpine mix plus our meadows trail mix. And that's going to have to total 10 pounds. So I don't know how many of each yet, but I do know that I'm going to combine the two and have a total of 10. So that's the easy one to set up. The percent equation. I know that I'm going to have 40% or the Alpine trail mix is 40% nuts. So instead of 40%, I like to convert it to a decimal. So 0.40 times A. That's going to represent how many nuts are in that pound of Alpine trail mix. Plus, I have 25% nuts in the meadows. So 0.25M has to total, um, we want our total mix to be 32% and the total pounds is 10. So that's where the 10 comes in on this one. So we actually use the 10 in both because we can't just say equals 0.32 because that doesn't make sense. But 32% of the mix. So now here's my system. Now you can solve it using substitution or elimination. I think substitution is the easier route to go on these problems. Um, my top equation is very easy to isolate a variable and get a variable all by itself, then I can use substitution. So I'm just going to isolate the A. If I just subtract M from both sides, that gives me 10 minus M. Now I can take that, and wherever I have an A in my second equation, which happens right here, I will put in 10 minus m, and that's going to give me a single equation with a single variable. So now, my new equation, 0 0.40 instead of a, I'm going to replace it with 10 minus m plus 0.25 m equals um, 0.32 times 10. Now let's go through and simplify everything we can and then we'll start solving. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is distribute my uh, 0 0.40 throughout the parentheses. That's going to give me 0.4 times 10 is simply 4 and then times 0.40m plus 0.25m and 0.32 times 10 is 3.2. So now let me combine my like terms, which I have m's. So a minus 0.40m plus a positive 0.25m leaves me with a negative 0.15m plus 0.32m 
which equals 3.2. Now I'm going to subtract my 4 from both sides. That's going to leave me negative 0.15m equals negative 0.8. And when I divide both sides by a negative 0.15, I get 5 and a third. I get 5.33333333. So that's how many pounds, and that's M, so that's my Meadows Trail Mix is five and a third pounds. So if five and a third is Meadows Trail, and I know my total has to be 10, then that means if I go 10 minus five and a third to find my Alpine Trail, then my Alpine Trail must be four and two thirds. And again, you get that by subtracting. We know the total is 10. We found that the Meadows Trail is 5 and a third. So 4 and 2 thirds plus 5 and 1 third make up your 10 total pounds. Now let's look at one that involves that motion formula. In other words, rate times time equals distance. Here we have a moving van and we have a car. So that should tell you we're going to have two equations, one about the van, one about the car. A moving van leaves a rest stop on an interstate highway and travels north at 50 miles per hour. An hour later, a car leaves the rest stop and travels north at 70 miles per hour. When will the car catch up to the van? So let's look at, we'll just do the van first. We're going to have the van, the rate is 50 miles an hour. We don't know how much time, so simply times t equals distance. My car is 70 miles an hour, an hour later. So the time from the van minus 1 would be an hour later. And if you think of that in terms of um, maybe 3 o'clock, then an hour later would be 2 o'clock, which when you think about it that way, you're like, that doesn't make sense, but you're talking in terms of hours, not necessarily the time on the clock. So the minus 1 is how many hours later, because it's driving fewer hours than the van is. So that's why it's minus one. A lot of students get that confused because they think of the time on the clock and they think, oh, they'd have to add one instead of subtract one. Because if it leaves at three, then that means the other car doesn't leave till four and you're adding one on the clock. But you're talking about how many hours are being driven and the car is actually driving one less hour than the van. So that's why we subtract one. And that's gonna equal a distance. We don't know the distance yet, okay. So here's our system, 50t equals d, and 70 times t minus 1 equals d. The 50 and the 7 are both the r, the t and the t minus 1 both represent the time, and the d obviously represents distance because we're not given any information about that whatsoever. So now, how do you solve this? I think this is one of the easier type to solve because it says, when will the car catch up to the van? Well, if you think about that logically, that means their distance must be equal because when will their distance be the same as when they uh, when the car catches up to the van so their distances must be equal so our equation is 50 t equals 70 times t minus 1 which makes sense because look we had them both equal d and if they both equal d then that means they must be equal to one another so here's our system that we're, or our equation that we're going to solve. So we have 50t equals 70t, because I have to dis, uh, distribute, minus 70. I have to get all my t's on one side, so if I subtract 70t from both sides, 
that's going to give me a negative 20t equals negative 70. And when I divide both sides by negative 20, I'm going to get 3 and a half. Seven, a negative divided by negative is a positive, and 70 divided by 20 is 3 and a half. So how many hours, or when will the car catch up to the van? It will catch up to the van in three and a half hours.